Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone. Today I want to talk about the Baseball Hall of Fame and actually did a Baseball Hall of Fame video fairly recently just sort of looking at the players who had a, a chance, you know, a decent chance of getting elected this year either through the Air Committee uh, and congratulations to Fred McGriff. He got elected this year through the Air Committee. He was the only player elected or through the standard uh, the standard way with the writers voting and uh, that, that hasn't been announced yet. That'll be announced I think in like mid-January. But in this video I want to look at active players who have a realistic chance of, uh, of eventually making the Baseball Hall of Fame. And this actually took quite a bit more research than I sort of thought it was going to be going in, as I thought, I was assuming maybe there'd be like 20 players to look at or something like that, but I decided to make the baseline only looking at players with a career war of at least 25, and there ended up being 60 active players who have a career war of at least 25. So I went through them one by one, eliminated uh, 21 of them that I thought have essentially zero chance of making the Hall, and that left me with 39 active players who I think have some sort of chance of making the Hall of Fame. A lot of these are, are long shots, but you know their, their chances aren't zero. And just to review War, uh, which I've mentioned before uh, on the channel a few times in terms of making the Hall of Fame, War is not a perfect stat. You need to look at a lot more than just War, but it's sort of the best single stat to sort of guess if a player is going to make the Hall of Fame looking at their career War. And, and this is the, the chart that is actually pretty accurate in terms of, you know, predicting whether a player will make the Hall of Fame. If they have 80 War or more, they, are, they will definitely make it. Uh, if, they have, if they do not reach 40, they essentially have no chance. And then in between, it's a sliding scale. The closer they are to reaching 80 the better chance they have of eventually making it in. Now, again, I only looked at players who have a career war of at least 25 at this moment in time, so a lot of young players who didn't consider Juan Soto and uh, Shohei Otani and uh, players like that, you know, Vladimir Guerrero, players who just haven't played long enough to accumulate much war yet. Uh, they're too early in their careers to really, you know, talk Hall of Fame. But uh, 60 players here that had a career war of at least 25, and, and have, uh, we're going to go through the 39 here that I think have some sort of chance. All right, we're going to run through the players one by one alphabetically here as uh, we are down with ABC on this channel. And then we'll sort of do a summary at the end. And uh, we're also going to include players who retired at the end of the 2022 season. So there might be a couple examples of that. First name alphabetically is Jose Abreu. That's his 2014 Topps Chrome Refractor rookie. All the players on here have multiple rookies, but we're just going to show one for each. And uh, all of Jose Abreu's rookies are from 2014. Abreu is a bit of a, a tricky one as he has a very impressive eight-year career going here. The numbers are very, very good given that he's only played eight seasons, but a big disadvantage that he started his career at the age of 27, so sort of way behind the curve and uh, just going to sort of struggle to get the career numbers up to where they need to be for Hall of Fame. You know, hits, home runs, those totals just really aren't there. 32 war, obviously too low, and he's, he's going to be entering his age 36 season, so he would really need you know, four or five more big seasons to sort of get into the the, the realistic chance. He does have an MVP in three All-Star games, but I sort of put him in the uh, unlikely category at this point. Next up is Jose Altuve, whose rookies are from 2011. That's his 2011 Topps Update rookie. And Altuve has a lot going for him for a Hall of Fame case. A lot of hardware. He's got an MVP, a gold glove, eight All-Star games. Uh, has won two World Series, three batting titles and the career numbers are pretty impressive given that he's entering his age 32 season. Almost 2,000 hits already, career war of 46, a batting average over 300 for the career. Uh, you know, definitely trajectorying towards making a, towards making the Hall, especially with a, another good season last year. If he has a couple more of those, he'll, he'll be well on his way. Next up, Nolan Arenado, whose rookie cards are from 2013. That's his 2013 Topps Chrome Orange Refractor rookie. And another one, Arenado, is uh, well on his way. A lot of hardware, seven All-Star games and 10-time Gold Glove winner. You'll have a hard time finding players with seven All-Star appearances and 10 Gold Gloves who are not in the Hall of Fame. He's already got 52 wards entering his age 32 season. The career numbers still have a little ways to go, but again, he's just 32, so should have a, a few more good seasons in him at a minimum. Uh, assuming he doesn't sort of drop off a cliff here, I think he's, he's well on his way. Next up is Mookie Betts, whose rookie cards are from 2014. That's his 2014 Bowman Chrome rookie, and again, another player with just a lot of hardware. An MVP, two World Series rings, six All-Star appearances, and six gold gloves. Again, you're going to have a hard time finding players with those sort of accomplishments uh, not in the Hall of Fame. 56 career war, and he's entering just his age 30 season. That puts him well on his way. The career totals, you know, hits and home runs, those need to be higher. But like Arenado, he would sort of have to fall off a cliff for him to not eventually get in. Next up to bat is Xander Bogarts, whose rookie cards are from 2014. That's his 2014 finest 
I believe it's the Black Refractor rookie. Bogarts is entering his age 30 season, and he's sort of a borderline case. If he sort of assumed he was maybe at the midpoint of his career, given that he's age 30 here, and he sort of doubled his numbers across the board, that would probably be enough to get him in. That would give him, you know, about 70 war and about 2,800 hits. That should be enough. But if he starts to slide off, you know, d d decline a bit in his earlier mid-30s, he, uh, he may fall short. Coming to the plate next is Alex Bregman, and that's his 2017 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor Autograph Rookie. All his rookies are from 2017. And he's a little younger than I wanted to, to showcase in this video, uh, but he, did, he does have you know, a career war over 25. So he's entering his age 28 season, and the career numbers are you know, just not, not very far along. It hasn't even reached 1,000 hits or 150 home runs. The career war of 30 is pretty impressive given that he's just 28. Uh, but it's sort of a little early to sort of predict Hall of Fame or not for, for Bregman, I would say. He, you know, he's on his way, but again, it's really uh, too early to say. Next up is Chris Bryant, and that's his 2015 Topps Heritage Purple Refractor Rookie. And Bryant was well on his way a few years ago. Uh, he does have an MVP and four All-Star Game appearances, but I sort of uh, had three or four really, really blah seasons in a row here, and, and those blah seasons are just not going to get him there. So unless he can sort of find the numbers he was putting up earlier in his career, I think he's going to probably fall well short. And now the first pitcher we're looking at is Madison Bumgarner, whose rookie cards are from 2010. That's his 2010 Topps Allen and Ginter rookie. And kind of like Chris Bryant, he's, you know, if you had looked at him three years ago, you would have said he's well on his way to a Hall of Fame career. But he's sort of had three really blah or even bad seasons in a row here and has really, really dropped off the pace Career war of 38 entering his age 33 season is sort of okay, but a winning percentage barely above 500, an ERA that's good but certainly not great, and just there's just no sort of numbers here that sort of suggest a Hall of Fame career. Now, he has three World Series uh, appearance, wins, including a World Series MVP and some very impressive World Series performances, so that would definitely help his cause if he can get his numbers closer to a Hall of Fame caliber player. And I'll sort of have to, again, have to rediscover the numbers he was putting up earlier in his career here in his mid-30s in, uh, in order to get there. And now our first essentially lock Hall of Famer, and that's Miguel Cabrera. That's his 2000 Topps traded rookie. Doesn't have very many cards from 2000, so not very many official rookie cards, but that there is uh, one of them. And Miguel Cabrera is a 12-time All-Star. There's no player who played in 12 All-Star games who is not in the Hall of Fame. There's no player who won a Triple Crown who's not in the Hall of Fame. There's no player who won four batting titles who's not in the Hall of Fame. There's no player with 3,000 career hits who's not in the Hall of Fame. There's no player with 500 career home runs who's not in the Hall of Fame. Miguel Cabrera reached all of those. Obviously, I'm not counting PED guys and, and players like Pete Rose who were banned for other reasons, but all those things, essentially, Miguel Cabrera is, you know, uh, unless there's some weird off-the-field stuff that happens in the next five years, he's, he's essentially a lock. Next up is Robinson Cano, and that's his 2003 Bowman Heritage Autograph Rookie. And Cano would have a pretty good case, but he tested positive twice for PEDs, so that alone is almost surely going to keep him out, at least in, in, in the near term. Eight All-Star games, uh, a career batting average of 3 301, 68 career war. These would sort of be numbers that get him into the you know 50-50 or maybe a little bit better than 50-50 category, but again, I think the PEDs will keep him out, at least for the foreseeable future. Second pitcher we're looking at is Garrett Cole. That's his 2013 Finest Orange Refractor Rookie Patch Auto. And Cole is not really pro projecting to make the Hall of Fame. The numbers are not, not high enough given that he's entering his age 32 season. But it's not impossible. He's, he's made five All-Star games and he's got a career war of 34. You know, if he, if he really has a strong you know, career into his late 30s, uh, yeah, I would sort of give him a chance. Next up is Carlos Correa, and that's his 2015 Tops. I'm not actually sure the title of this card. 2015 Tops High Tech Gold Autograph Rookie, maybe. Don't quote me on that, but his rookie cards are from 2015. And Correa is an interesting one to me. If you look at just his war, he's way well on the pace. His war is almost 40, and is entering just his age 28 season. That puts him, you know, well on his way to easily making it. But uh, none of the other numbers are really all that impressive. Ha has not even reached a thousand hits yet. Uh, barely just 150 home runs. He only played in two All-Star games, so not quite sure what to make of that. I would sort of say he's you know 50-50 at this point, maybe maybe a little bit better than that. And now really a long shot this is Nelson Cruz. That's his 2005 Bowman rookie, and Nelson Cruz he's really at the end of his career here, just having just played in his age 42 season. Uh, career war of 42 is probably going to be too short, but he does have seven All-Star appearances if you want to make the case. And the real number that sort of gives him a shot, his 459 career home runs. There's 
very, very, very few players with that many home runs who are not in the Hall of Fame. But despite all that, I think Nelson Cruz is, uh, like I said earlier, a long shot. And our third pitcher here is Jacob DeGrom. That's his 2014 Topps rookie. And DeGrom is another really interesting one to me as the numbers sort of are confusing depending on how you look at them. If you said to me somebody entering their age 34 season had a career war of 44, I'd say, okay, he's, he's got a chance. But if you told me someone entering their age 34 season, a starting pitcher has, a, has only 82 career wins, I'd say he has absolutely no chance at all. As starting pitchers really don't get considered until they have, you know, 200 wins or something like that. But so he's really far off the pace there, but an amazing career ERA, an impressive career whip. He's already won two Cy Young awards. If he can sort of get some of these totals up over the next few years, you know, you might have to consider the short-term greatness, you know, when 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 discussing his Hall of Fame case. But I think it's sort of unlikely as it sits here. All right, Freddie Freeman, whose rookie cards are from 2011. That's his 2011 Topps Heritage rookie. And uh, he's looking pretty good. He's got an MVP and six All-Star Game appearances. Uh, career war of 49 as he enters his age 33 season. Career totals are getting up there. 1,900 hits, 300 home runs, over 1,000 runs and RBIs. If he can push those up a little bit more, you know, two or three more solid seasons like he's been having recently, and he should be in, in really good shape. I would put him at, you know, 50-50 or, or probably above that at this at this moment in time. Next up is Paul Goldschmidt. That's his 2010 Bowman Chrome Autograph uh, Refractor. It's his first Bowman Chrome card. And Goldschmidt's looking pretty good. He's got an MVP, seven All-Star appearances, and four gold gloves. Uh, career war approaching 60 as he enters his age 35 season. The career totals are getting up there. Uh, 1,700 hits, 300 home runs, over 1,000 runs in RBIs. I think he's looking pretty good, especially because he just had a, a pretty killer season with a war of eight. So if he has another you know, two or two or three solid seasons, he should, he should be you know, well on his way to the Hall of Fame. Now our fourth pitcher, Zach Greinke. That's his 2002 Bowman Chrome rookie card. He's uh, He does not have a lot of rookie cards as his rookies were from the early 2000s when, when the brands weren't all sort of fighting to get all the, the young rookies on, onto their into their sets. But Greinke's probably going to make it. He's uh, already got a career war of 76. He's entering his age 39 season. He's got a Cy Young, six gold gloves, six all-stars. There's, a, there's enough hardware there to pretty much make sure he's almost, almost surely going to get in. Uh, the win-loss total is, is solid, good enough. And again, career war of 77 should basically already get him in. Now Bryce Harper, one of the most hyped prospects of all time, and his rookie cards are from 2012. That's 2012 Topps Triple Threads Rookie Patch Auto. Nice looking card there. And Harper also is, is well on his way. Two-time MVP, seven All-Star Game appearances, some other additional hardware. Career war of 42 already as he enters his age 30 season. Their career totals are solid given that he's just 30 years old. He is uh, well on his way. You know, two, two or three more solid seasons, or let's say three or four more solid seasons, and he should he should have no problem making the Hall of Fame. Obviously, he could fall off a cliff, but I would definitely put him into the uh, the probably category at this point. Next up is Aaron Judge, who's sort of an interesting one or, or a unique case. Rookie cards are from 2017. That's his 2017 Topps Gold Label Rookie. And like Jose Abreu, he started his career really late. I think he made his debut at age 25 or 26 even. And so it's just very behind the curve in, in, in terms of getting the, the total career totals up there to Hall of Fame worthy levels. But he's, he's obviously gone crazy here with an MVP, four All-Star games, and a, a career war of 37 as he enters his age 30 season. That's very solid. And, and last year had a war of over 10 in a single season. That's absolutely crazy. 62 home runs, obviously a very historic season. You know, the career totals are very low for a 30-year-old. 748 hits. I mean, I, I don't know that there are any hitters in the Hall of Fame without at least double that. Uh, but, you know, given how solid his season was last year and, and assuming he sort of stays a major star in the league for the next, you know, three, four seasons plus, I think he'll, he's got a, a very, very good shot. I think he's, he's, you know, probable at this point. Next up is our second true lock after Miguel Carrera, maybe, maybe our third lock if you want to say Zach Greinke, but our, our, our second true lock in Clayton Kershaw, whose rookie cards are from 2007, that's his, sorry, 2008, that's his 2008 Tops Allen and Ginter rookie, and he's just got too much hardware to keep him out. An MVP, three Cy Youngs, nine All-Star game appearances, a gold glove, five ERA titles, a World Series ring, uh, 76 war as he enters his age 34 season, a, a ridiculous career ERA and whip. I think he makes it in easily on the first ballot. Next up, Francisco Lindor, whose rookie cards are from 2015. That's his 2015 Topps rookie. And Lindor is looking pretty solid. He's definitely got time on his side. He's only entering his age 29 season. Already has a career war of 37. That's pretty solid. Uh, the career totals are not very high yet, but like I said, he, he de definitely has time on his side. He's played four All-Star games, two gold gloves, 
Uh, he, he's looking pretty good. And assuming he sort of continues his career pace, he should uh, should be able to get there. Uh, you know, obviously, if he starts to trickle downwards, that, that might be a different story. But I'd say he's 50-50 or better. Next up is Evan Longoria, whose rookie cards are from 2008. That's his 2008 Upper Deck Gaudi rookie. And Longoria is really a long shot, I would say, as he's sort of at the end of his career here, entering his age 37 season. And really, there's no numbers here that sort of suggest Hall of Famer, except for possibly the career war being 58. That's pretty solid, you know, sort of puts him in the approaching 50-50 category, but really no other numbers are there. Career totals are just not high enough, and uh, only three All-Star game appearances, not, not a whole lot of hardware. I would say he's he's kind of a long shot. Coming to the plate next is Manny Machado, whose rookie cards are from 2013. That's his 2013 Tops Chrome I have Purple Refractor. I guess it might be the Blue Refractor. I think it's the Purple Refractor rookie. And Machado is also well on his way. Six All-Star game appearances, two gold gloves, a career war of 52 as he enters his age 30 season. That puts him well on pace to uh, to make the Hall of Fame. The career totals are certainly, certainly you know, solid for a 30-year-old. He would have to fall off pretty hard, to uh, I, I think, to, to not eventually get in. Next up is another sort of long shot at the end of his career, and that's Andrew McCutcheon, and that's his 2005 Tops rookie. And McCutcheon uh, is entering his age 36 season, really, it's really, like I said, towards the end of his career here. He's got a couple things, you know, an MVP, five all-star games, a gold glove, uh, but really the career numbers, I mean, they're, they're just not quite there. If he can sort of put together a couple more major, you know, solid seasons, you know, accumulating some more numbers, he might get there. But at this point, I would call him a long shot. Next up is another really unique one in Yadier Molina, rookie cards from 2004. That's his 2004 Tops rookie. And uh, Molina, if you just looked at his career totals, it's just not a Hall of Famer. There's there's no numbers there that suggest Hall of Fame career. You know, 2,000 hits is is the best sort of number to point to. 42 career wars is too low, and there's just no numbers that sort of suggest Hall of Famer. But he was a catcher, and he was the best defensive catcher of his generation. And he played in 10 All-Star games and won nine gold gloves. I, don't, I, I would, without having looked it up, I would bet there's no player with 10 All-Star game appearances and nine gold gloves who's not in the Hall of Fame. So I think uh, Molina will uh, will probably get in. Next up, another catcher, uh, Salvador Perez. Rookie cards from 2011. That's a 2011 Bowman Gold. And uh, sort of a similar case to Yadamir Molina. He's a little younger, entering his age 32 season. You know, the, the career numbers just aren't aren't there as, a, as like a Hall of Fame career. 268 average, you know, 1,200 hits, 200 home runs, 32 war. None of these are... None of these suggest Hall of Fame, but you, again, a strong defensive catcher, one of the best defensive catchers of his era. Seven All Star games and five Gold Glove appearance, uh, seven All Star game appearances, five Gold Gloves. So uh, you know he's sort of like Molina, just not quite f- as far along. I would so I would sort of put him in the unlikely category, but definitely has a chance. Now another pitcher, David Price, rookie card. Uh, there is 2009 Topps Heritage. And Price is probably going to fall short here. He's got some decent hardware. Cy Young, five All-Star game appearances, a World Series ring, two ERA titles. Uh, but a career war of just 40 entering his age 37 season. Pretty impressive winning percentage, 157 and 82. But the, the win total is not very uh, not very high. You know, like I think I said earlier, 200 wins is sort of where you, you start to discuss starting pitchers. And it doesn't appear he's going to gonna get there. So I would sort of put him in the unlikely category, but, you know, not certainly not impossible. Now the easiest one to analyze on this entire video, and that is Albert Pujols. Rookie cards from 2001. That's his 2001 Topps traded rookie. And Pujols is a no-brainer first ballot Hall of Famer. Three-time MVP, 11 All-Star games, two gold gloves. Lots of hardware there. Uh, over 700 home runs, ranks fourth all-time. Career war over 100. Uh, he's an absolute no-brainer. Next up is Jose Ramirez. That's his 2014 finest rookie. And Ramirez, I'd kind of put it like 50-50 or so. Uh, career war of 40 entering his age 30 season is is very solid, but the career totals just really aren't aren't there. Not very high for a, for a 30 year old, uh, and not not a whole lot of hardware. So he's going to have to continue playing at a pretty high level throughout you know his his early and mid 30s. But if he can do that, he should be able to uh, to get in. Now a bit of a long shot in Anthony Rizzo. That's his 2011 Topps Gold rookie, and Rizzo's career numbers just aren't, really aren't there. Entering his age 33 season, a career war of 39, and the, the totals just are not not close to what they need to be. He's got a little bit of hardware: three All Star games, four Gold Gloves, a World Series ring. But uh, he's going to have to really pick up the pace here in his in his mid 30s to to get in. Uh, you know, I'd call him pretty unlikely, but I guess not impossible. Back to pitchers here: Chris Sale. That's his 2010. 
Bowman Chrome Gold Refractor Autograph, first Bowman Chrome card. And Chris Sale uh, got a chance, but I'd say he's, he's kind of off the pace entering his age 34 season. Career War of 45 is pretty nice. Seven All-Star Game appearances is pretty solid. But only 114 wins. You really need, like I've mentioned a couple times now, you really need kind of get close to 200 or so before you're, you're, you're realistically considered. A strong winning percentage and a strong ERA, but uh, he's going to need a few more, a few more solid seasons where he can sort of rack up some wins here to get, uh, to get serious consideration, I think. Now another pitcher, Max Scherzer. That's his 2008 Topps Update rookie. And Scherzer is is basically in. You know, I'm going to put him in the probably category, but he he's more or less uh, a lock. Three Cy Young awards. There, there's no player who won three Cy Youngs who's not in the Hall of Fame. Eight All Star Game appearances. Career WAR of 72 as he enters his age 38 season. The win total is not that high. 201 career wins. Uh, you know, is like I've mentioned. That's enough, but n- nothing amazing. But the fact he only has 100 losses against the 200 wins. Pretty amazing win percentage, a pretty impressive career ERA. I'd be pretty surprised if he finds a way not to get in. Next up is a really interesting one in Giancarlo Stanton, who early in his career went by Mike Stanton, and that's his 2010 Topps Chrome Autograph Refractor Rookie. And Stanton, kind of like Bumgarner and, and Chris Bryant, if he, if he had looked at him three years ago, he would have been an absolute no-brainer lock future Hall of Famer, but he basically had three bad seasons in a row here. And you can really no, no longer say that. He has career war of 45 as he enters his age 33 season. That's still pretty decent. he got a little bit of hardware in MVP, five all-star games. Uh, his most impressive number is 378 career home runs. At age 33, that's pretty solid. Got a pretty good chance of reaching 500, which would basically make him a lock Hall of Famer. But at this point, I'd call him sort of 50-50 or, or you know, maybe a little bit better than that. Next up, another really easy one, not much to analyze here. Mike Trout, rookie cards from 2011. That's his 2011 Topps Update rookie, a very significant card in the baseball card hobby. And Trout is an absolute lock, no-brainer, first ballot Hall of Famer. Three MVPs, 10 All-Star games, a career war of 82. Uh, th- th- that alone would, would get him in if he retired today. He would uh, make the Hall of Fame as is. Only have five players left to look at here. Next is Trey Turner, rookie cards from 2016. That's his 2016 Topps Archives rookie. And Turner's a little bit off the pace. He's, he's still young. going to enter his age 29 season. He has a career war just short of 30. But the career totals are pretty pretty low for a, for a 29-year-old looking to make the Hall of Fame. You know, not a whole lot of hardware yet. So I think he's got, um, I think he's got a way to, ways to go. I'd, I'd put him in the pretty unlikely category at this point. Next up is our final lock of the video, and that's Justin Verlander. That's his 2005 Bowman Chrome Refractor, uh, first Bowman Chrome card. And Verlander, like I said, is essentially a lock. Career war of 78. He's going to be entering his age 40 season, but just way too much hardware here. Three Cy Youngs, an MVP, a Triple Crown, two World Series rings, nine All-Star games, two ERA titles. Uh, just too much going on for him not to get uh, not to get in. 78 career war and plenty of wins, a great winning percentage, a great ERA. Everything that everything's there, he he will get in, barring something crazy happening. Next up, Joey Votto, and that's his 2008 finest green refractor rookie. And Joey Votto, uh, sort of in the 50-50 category. He's got an MVP in six All-Star games. Uh, he's he's really at the end of his career here, entering the age his age 39 season, and and really d- you know didn't have much of a season in 2022. Uh, his numbers are a little low. 2,000 hits, 340 home runs. You know, a career batting average of 297 is nice. Over 1,100 runs in RBIs. Uh, the numbers are, are low, but 64 career WAR. You know, I think he'll he'll get solid consideration and and may just uh, may just get in. And last two players to look at are a little bit of long shots. Adam Wainwright. That's his 2,000 Bowman rookie, and uh, he's you know he's now f- going to be entering his four, age 41 season, so pretty late in his career, if not at the very end. Career war of 47 is a little light. There's not a whole lot of hardware there. Three All-Star games, two gold gloves, a World Series ring. Uh, there, there's not numbers here that sort of suggest a Hall of Famer. He has, does have 195 wins and a very impressive win-loss record. So I think he'll get consideration, but I would I would basically call him uh, pretty unlikely. And last player to consider is Christian Yelich. That's his 2011 Topps Finest Green Refractor pa- uh, Rookie Patch Auto. Nice looking card. And Yelich is another one who a couple years ago was looking really solid to be on pace, but has had a couple bad seasons in a row here and is, is no, sort of no longer on, on pace. He does have an MVP and, and a little bit of hardware, but 36 career war entering his age 31 season. 
the numbers really are not high enough to be uh, to be a strong consideration at this point. Obviously, if he goes on a tear in his mid to late third, or you know, early to mid thirties, he uh, he'll ha- he'll have a very good shot. But at this point, I'd say he's uh, a long shot. But that's it for the thirty nine players, active players with at least twenty five career WAR, who I think have a a shot of making the Hall of Fame. Like I said, there were twenty one other players with a career WAR of at least twenty five. Who I just don't think have any chance. And I organized them here into four categories. Uh, yes, probably, 50-50, and has a chance. And many of these names, you could move one category left or right, and it would still basically apply. So go easy on me uh, there. But, you know, the players in the yes category, those six names, I think those are all lock Hall of Famers. The, the ones in the probably category, I think those are all probably all going to make it. I put them in probably because, you know, maybe one or two or, or even three of them sort of has a major injury or uh, falls off a cliff in the next year or two and, and sort of falls short. But I think those are all going to most likely get in. In the 50-50 category, you got seven names there. Yeah, I'd expect three or four of them to get in. And in the has a chance category, you got 17 names there. Uh, I think most of those will, will not get in. You know, maybe three or four or five of them or so do based on how, you know, the rest of their career goes. So there it is, my analysis for active players who have a chance of making the Hall of Fame. I uh, would love to hear other people's opinion on this. I'm sure there are a lot of names here that, you know, certain people disagree with my analysis on. would love to hear about that as, you know, I tried to look at this purely from like a number standpoint and remove emotion, which can be hard as a lot of these players I'm big fans of or, or not fans of. I uh, tried to remove that aspect out of it as much as I could. But uh, like I said, would love to hear your opinions on this. Uh, what do you think? Any of these names way off or, or, or spot on or, or whatever it is. But thank you everyone for watching and hope to see you all again real soon. Thanks everyone.